Good morning, I am going to teach you how to make fresh, hot, homemade pretzels, just like you would get at the mall. In fact, it's even better because you can have some later, you don't just have to have one, but you can save them, they freeze well. And we have been making these pretzels for probably um, several decades, close to, close to 25 years, we have been making these pretzels. We got the recipe right after we first got married from my sister-in-law, she was passing it on from another friend. And so I'm not sure where the original recipe came from, but we have used the same recipe all these years. We've used it in birthday parties and just all kinds of fun things. For a long time, we had a tradition on Sunday evenings where we would have floats along with these pretzels for our Sunday dinner. I don't know, it's probably bad, but it was a fun tradition as our kids were growing up. So I'm gonna show you how to make this very simple pretzel recipe. It really requires flour, sugar, and salt. That's basically it. So a lot of times yeast is what makes people kind of intimidated by making breads, and this is a yeast recipe. But let me tell you, it, it, you do not have to be intimidated by yeast. I actually have a blog post up on my oatmeal, healthy and delicious oatmeal bread, that talks about yeast and how you can tell if yeast is working in your recipe and that you don't have to be afraid of it anymore. I'm going to start with my all-purpose flour. I'm just gonna get out three and a half cups and measure it out like this. If you want to, you can double this recipe, but this usually makes two cookie sheets full of pretzels. Next, I'm going to use bread flour, which I don't know if you have this available in your area, but I buy bags of flour by 50 pound bags and this is called seal of minnesota and i specifically like this for my breads because it has a higher gluten so if you're if you need to be gluten free you probably have to try a different flour for this but um, the higher gluten the better for fluffier bread so we're going to add one cup of bread flour to that we're going to add a half a teaspoon of just regular salt and that's it flour and salt go in this to my flour mixture I'm going to add yeast and this is not as scary as what people think people are a lot of times very intimidated by yeast but you want to make sure several things you want to have fresh yeast and I always buy mine in bulk and so I put it in the freezer and it keeps for a long time. If you buy them in the packages, you can do the same thing. You can just leave them in the freezer or the refrigerator and that will help with the longevity and the lifespan of your yeast. But we're going to put it into warm water that is warm between 105 and 115 degrees. It's kind of like when you had babies and you would test the bottles to make sure that they were warm enough and not too hot. You kind of get used to it once you do a lot of this and um, so you know what the temperature is going to be just by putting your finger underneath the running water. So this is the right temperature, a cup and a half, and to that I'm gonna add one tablespoon of yeast, and then I'm gonna add about eighth more. So one and one eighth tablespoon of yeast. So it looks like this. I'm just gonna take a fork and stir that up. And then to that, I'm going to add brown sugar. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of brown sugar, and I don't really know the scientific reason, except they just say it produces more carbon dioxide, which gives you good bubbles, and bubbles are good. When you have yeast, you wanna see bubbles. That shows you, we call it proofing the yeast, that shows you that the yeast is activated and working. We're gonna let that proof for about five to 10 minutes, and then we're going to incorporate it into our flour mixture. You can see the yeast is properly bubbled. It's got all kinds of bubbles there, and we've incorporated it into the flour. I'm gonna put the lid on my Bosch, and then we're going to mix this up into, uh, for probably about three, four minutes, and it's gonna form a nice dough. To go ahead and just take this 
for me, this is how I do this. I just take this out and then I cover this and let this raise for an hour to two hours and it's gonna double in size. So like I said, it makes two cookie sheets full of pretzels. If you wanna make more than that, which I would highly recommend if you have more than six people to make a double batch. just reach in and take a ball like this and then I'm just going to on the counter form this into a long rope After I've rolled out my pretzels, I'm going to take two cups of water and two tablespoons of baking soda. I'm just gonna boil this for a few minutes. I'm going to dip my pretzel into the baking soda and then we will put it on a greased baking pan to bake for seven to 10 minutes. So that's it, that's how you make homemade pretzels. You can get whatever dipping sauces you like the best if you want a cheese sauce. Cream cheese is one of our favorites. You can make them sweet by putting cinnamon and sugar on them or more savory with pepperoni or hot dogs. So come visit me for more ideas at thejennyren.com.